friends, and welcome to the Happy Hour with Jamie Ivey podcast. I'm your host, Jamie, and I'm so excited that you're here. Every week, I invite a girlfriend to join me on the show, and we chat about the big things in life, the little things in life, and everything in between. Guys, whether you're looking for a flavor adventure or simply better tasting meals, fill your pantry with spice islands. From Saigon cinnamon to dill weed to bay leaves, garlic powder, cumin, and turmeric, Spice Islands maintains a strict standard for each item to ensure consistency, quality, and flavor. And they use a craft approach to capture the volatile oil of each spice, which gives its flavor. Visit spiceislands.com slash happy hour for more spice facts and delicious recipes. And pick up Spice Island spices in the premium spice section of your local retailers. Guys, you're listening to episode number 169, and my friend Kat Lee is joining me today on the show. Kat and I met years ago when I was a guest on her podcast before I even had my own show. Since then, she's been a friend and someone that I bounce ideas off of about book writing and podcasting, etc. Kat has a book that's releasing next Tuesday, December 5th, and it's called Hello Mornings. And my friends, it's not just about mornings, but it's about our stories and how important they are. Kat was on the show forever ago, so go listen to her in episode number 27 when you get done with this one. No matter what stage of life you're in, you're going to be encouraged to get up and tackle the days ahead of you. This book would be a great gift for Christmas because, hello, it's almost January. And what do we do in January? We make new goals. And so Hello Mornings would be a great book for that. Guys, I want to tell you that we have a Happy Hour Facebook group. Come on and join us. If you listen to the show, you should join our group because what we do over there is talk about the show. So go find us. Go to jamieivy.com slash happy hour Facebook. Also, if you missed the holiday gift guide from episode number 167, make sure you go back and listen because there's great companies that are going to make great places for you to buy gifts. And I know it's like the end of November right now, but guys, let's get our shopping out of the way so we can enjoy our time with our family. All right, my friends, here is my conversation with Kat. Hi, Kat. Welcome to the happy hour. Thank you so much for having me. It's so fun to be here. There's a little sign that welcomed me. It says the happy hour and cat. My daughter is a big letter folk fan. And so she saw that and she's like, mom, look. I love that. <laughs> it's my first thing. I've seen these little things in people's houses and they put the cutest things. And I don't know that I'll have any cute sayings, but I'll welcome every guest to the show with their name on the board. That's awesome. It's kind of it. like um, when I was talking with people about writing a book, I went to visit a publisher and they had my name in the opening in the like lobby. And I thought this it was the it. coolest thing ever. This is awesome. It was yes. awesome. Yes. It's like when my kids had a birthday party at a putt-putt place and on their billboard, it said, happy birthday, Caden. And you thought it was the best thing in the yeah. world. Yeah. We still feel that way when we're adults. <laughs> um, okay, something funny happened. I was interviewing someone. Well, it might've been Abby who was just in here before you um, interviewing and her show was on last week. And she said, asked me who I was interviewing next. And I told her, she goes, oh, I know that name. Has she been on the show before? And so I said, no, I don't think so. And you totally have. I think I have. Uh huh. That's nothing. A long time get, ago. You didn't make a bad impression on me. I didn't have a. I don't remember things. That was so long ago. <laughs> and you were originally on. You were number twenty-seven. That is way back when. I remember you asking me. So I'm thinking about starting a podcast. Well, I, I might have know? told this story when I interviewed you the first time because I don't remember, obviously. But I tell this story all the time. People ask about how you got into podcasting. And I mentioned the radio story for Mm -hmm. sure. But then I always say this, I always say, and I was a guest on a podcast and it really made me feel as though I could do this. And it was with you. Oh, that's so fun. I don't think I knew that. You had me on your show. I mean, I knew knew you've been on the show, I think. (laughs) You didn't know that part of the story. Uh, You had me on your show and I remember, this is funny. I remember sitting at my dining room table doing this podcast interview thing. It was my very first one. And then I thought, I think I could do that too. That's so fun. Yay. And so then the happy hour was born. I love it. It, It's funny. um, Emily Thomas from Mom's Struggling Well calls me her podcast grandmother. And she calls Heather McFadden her podcast mother. I was going to ask who the mom was. So I feel like I might have a small family of podcast children. You were (laughs) paving the way for us podcasters, which... People say that to me sometimes. I'm like, listen, there's people before me, you know? I tell Sophia Melanie, I'm like, I remember listening to them on yes. their podcast. And I thought, if these two ladies can just talk about like what they bought at Kohl's and <laughs> their makeup and college football, I can do this too. <laughs> I feel like with them, like I, I say, Christy Knuckles, if she just sang the alphabet of the phone book, I would listen to it. If Sophie and Melanie talked about, you know, seeds, I would totally listen. And we do. They're just hilarious. They're hilarious. Yes. They're hilarious. Yeah. Have you listened to Christy Knuckles' podcast? I have not. I'm going to recommend it to everybody I right need now. To. Go listen to it because her voice is also wonderful when she talks, 
which I didn't know that until, I mean, I've met her in person, you know, and, and I was on her show when she first started it, but sometimes she doesn't even have guests on. She just talks and that's hard. Mm -hmm. That's, I could not do a show like that. Yeah, I can't. No way. Uh, But I have listened to most of her shows and every single time I'm like, love God more and then moved. Mm -hmm. And she's just a really, she does a great job. So is it just called the Christy Knuckles podcast? No, it's called, I don't even have to look it up. I know it. Glorious Mundane? Yes. Because I remember she did a motherhood video series a long time ago. The Glorious and the Mundane. Yes. Um, Okay. Do you, I'm assuming that you are a podcast listener since you're a podcast creator. I am. I haven't been as much lately. But, okay. but what do you love? What show? If someone's like, oh, what show are you loving? Yeah, this is going to be dorky. Oh no, I go for it. I listen to business podcasts. Okay. What is it? Like I love Amy Porterfield. I just started. Just listening to her? Yes. I really like her. She just seems very sincere. And I mean, I, I think the name was, the, what's the name of her podcast? Online Marketing Made Easy. Okay. Yeah. So then, you know, that sounds a little, I don't know if that sounds kind of dorky and you, not interesting. Not, you know, Unless you want to be a marketer. Yeah. Right, right. But she, I mean, she really, as a podcaster, I can't imagine the amount of work she puts into each episode because it's usually just her talking. She does interviews occasionally, usually just her talking. And it is like, it's a course in a podcast. And she even includes notes that you can download. Um, like full on worksheets and everything that probably most people would make you pay for. Yes. Um, and so as a podcaster, I really admire the amount of work that she puts into it. And then as a business person, I just love learning. Yeah. Um, I have just been listening to a podcast. So I, I just started listening to her too for business as well. Um, I had just listened to a kind of a podcast series called Dirty John. I haven't heard of it. Wondry puts it out along with, I think the LA Times and it's story driven. So it's, you know, one of those kind of serial type uh, podcasts. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, it, I would, I listened to the whole thing. I was intrigued. That's awesome. I, I find I tend towards audiobooks instead. See, I don't listen instead, to audiobooks. Well, it's just, uh, it honestly depends on me. See, there was a season where I listened to tons of podcasts. I'd listened to Gone Centered Mom or Sally Clarkson's podcast or Pat Flynn's mm-hmm. podcast. But Every now and then I just get into this huge audiobook binge and I really like audiobooks. I don't know why. I think because when I listen to a podcast, I'm usually doing something else. Mm -hmm. And although I'm taking information in, I think I would struggle with taking in a book and following Uh, along. Yes. Okay. So you said you like business podcasts. You like business stuff. Do Have you always... No, I got a D in accounting. And I think my professor was just being nice because I went in and basically promised him I was going to change my major. And so I think he gave me a D out of mercy and kindness. Uh He was a very kind man. Do you remember his name? You know, I don't, but he looked like an accounting professor in in all the best ways, (laughs) like like in all the best, like 1950s dad kind of, uh Uh you know, just he was every fun memories of him, maybe just because he gave me the D and let me pass. But, um, But yeah, it was... I I didn't like business. I changed from a business major to a radio, film, TV major in school. And, but somewhere in the last few years, I just think it's fascinating, especially just marketing. And I don't like selling things and being um, unauthentic or not genuine or trying to convince people to do things. But I love just kind of the psychology behind how to communicate well, which is ultimately kind of what business is. You know, people have a need. How can we communicate that this could really help them? And I, I, something about that sort of fascinates me. I, I love think. that. And I think I hear a lot of women um, say things like, I'm just, I don't want to like talk about my stuff because I don't want to, I don't want to be unauthentic and I don't want people to think I'm trying to sell them something off, often. But I also meet a lot of women who are doing amazing things and have either a product or a course or a book or music or an album or something to sell, mm-hmm. but they struggle with the act of selling. Mm-hmm. You have a podcast, you have a book releasing next week, all of these things. How do you market yourself and stay authentic? Honestly, it's kind of the same way that I speak. When I go speak someplace, people are like, does it make you nervous? Is it scary? And if I just really think about that person sitting right there, you know, sitting at that table right there or that spot in the back, just really think about them and how can I make them see their value? How can I encourage them? How can I help them step into everything that God has for them? You know, and this is totally cheesy, but I love the movie Wonder Woman. (laughs) Have you seen it? I just saw it recently with my kid. Wait, 
This Winter, is the new one, right? The new one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just saw it recently with my kids. Yeah. And so there's the line where Princess Warrior Buttercup, you know, what are, did you know that the warrior trainer is Princess Buttercup from? I did it. And let me just do full confession here. Okay. I, when I say watched, mm -hmm. um, even though there's a woman in this, these kind of movies are not your thing. They're so not my thing. I think I fell asleep in the middle of it and I think no. I had my computer open. <laughs> okay, well then later on. So gonna... when I say I watched okay. it, I meant I was in the same room when it was playing. Okay, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to um, send you a link to my favorite part okay, so I that you can enjoy that. the yes. key elements. Yeah. Because we'll put it in the show notes. Is it yeah. like a clip? Yeah, I can okay, send yes. it. Show it, to it. Me. I don't even, I don't actually don't even like movies very uh -huh. much. And I definitely don't like action movies, but something about this movie just resonated with me. But the warrior person is actually Princess Buttercup from The Princess okay, Bride. Yeah, which I do love that movie. Okay. And anyway, she says to Wonder Woman, she says something like, um, you know, you are capable of so much more than you know. And she just says this to her a couple of times and, and not to give the movie away, but Wonder Woman is essentially more than just an uh, Amazon warrior, whatever. But something about that line just resonated with me. And I just love looking at women or thinking about the people that listen to the podcast or who might buy my book and think, you know, they're capable of so much more than they know. And so many people feel so held back by so many things. And I, I think one of my greatest joys is just cheering people on. And, you know, much to the chagrin of my children at sporting events, I have to rein myself in. <laughs> but I just love helping people believe in themselves and find what they need to go where they're supposed to go. And so anyway, when it comes to the book or the podcast or sharing resources that I think might help people or speaking to them, that's kind of just what's in my heart. I just... And I want to cheer people on. I want to be a podcast grandparent to lots of people, yeah, yeah. you know, in whatever, you know, sphere of life that they're in. That's uh -huh. kind of, that. that's what motivates me. You're like, I, I'll give you the name of like my podcast mom too. Aww, See, you now you have lots of children. Aww. You have more children than you know. You know, I feel the same way. And I remember talking to someone at some event, I think it was maybe a noonday event, honestly. And we were talking about, I was on a panel and they were talking about, you know, they sell product, you know, and how do we, how do we be bold and asking people to buy this product? They sell jewelry. I sell in a sense podcast, even though you don't have to pay for this, but mm -hmm. I am, you know, I do want more listeners and we both want to sell books, right? So we had this product, but I remember telling those ladies at Noonday, I was like, listen, here's the deal. If you believe so highly in your product and you believe so highly in the mission of, you know, why they should buy jewelry from you and not from wherever else, then you would want to tell people, mm -hmm. you know? And so I have found that with marketing, my podcast is super easy for me. I, Cause I also think because it's not just me, I always have another person with me, right? you know? Right. Yeah. So I don't feel like it's the Jamie Ivy show uh -huh. because I'd be born. I couldn't do what Christy Knuckles does. I couldn't have, I, I couldn't think talk. you could, but no, you know. no, no, I couldn't. <laughs> First of all, I don't know what I'm talking about. But anyhow, it feels easier. Now I'm about to start marketing a book mm -hmm. and that feels scary mm -hmm. because I think it's just me. My name's on the cover. It may, I, mm -hmm. I literally can feel nervous mm -hmm. right now. Um, but I have to remind myself kind of just what you just said. Like, do I believe in what it says? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there are people that need it. Like we're sitting in your office here and you just bought this awesome furniture from a store and you walked in the store and you're like, yes, this is what I needed. Here's my money. <laughs> yes. You're talking about how we don't want to have to pick things out from lots of different stores. We want to walk into a store. Oh, look, you've assembled that nice collection that looks nice together. Here is my money. I'm happily giving it to you. And that's how there's, you know, there's so many people out there looking for a solution, looking for an incredible book that's going to help them, which Jamie's book is, by the way. <laughs> um, and so it's not really selling. It's really more a matter of finding the people who have the need that what you have fills. So yeah, that's the marketer. I hear it. That uh -huh. is what we need to hear. And that's what people need to hear that are listening. It's you're feeling a need. Uh huh. Meet a need. Uh huh. And we forget, you know, it's, you forget that when you're on the other side of you do. promoting something, because then you, f you only think of the bad promotions. You only think of the things where people made you feel awkward yeah. and whatnot, but that weird middle of the night infomercial, right. you're just like, no, I'm not buying a squeegee or whatever right. from you. Instead yeah. of thinking about Girl Scout selling Thin Mints, you know, you're like, oh, I've been waiting all year for you. <laughs> yes. Where have you been all my right. life? Right. Yeah. Okay. I love that you love marketing and you and I are in, I think two, two Voxer groups. Yes, we are. Which is a great yeah. place to go, just kind of throw ideas out there and stuff. But I have become someone who loves that stuff more since having a podcast. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. kind of like where I listen to Amy Porterfield and, you know, Gold Digger and right. these type of shows, Don Miller's podcast, which is oh, great. Oh yeah, that is a good one. It's a great mm -hmm. one as well. Okay, so you're my podcast mom and <laughs> I'm just going to return to make that. myself a t-shirt podcast the, mom. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, 
Kat, you have a book, like I mentioned, coming out. But this book, I want to talk about the book, obviously, but I really want to talk about just where this all came from because this book has been an overflow, basically, Mm -hmm. of a community that you've been developing and leading for, I mean, for years. Mm -hmm. Like seven years. Yeah, for seven years, you have been leading this community and developing these habits. I even joined it one month. Uh, We can talk about that later when we talk about (laughs) our successes and failures. Um, But where did this idea of making... Let me see if I can get your phrase okay. right. Okay. Waking. Oh, gosh. Here we go. You can do it. I can do it. I, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. It just makes sense if I can say it in my head. Waking up to your children, for your children. For your life. You can do either one. Waking up for your life, not to your life. Yes. There were, there were I'll, I'll let you guys know there were hand motions there. That there were hand motions because I was going to say the opposite, do, yeah. which... I don't know why. Okay, so ex- say the right phrase the right way so we don't confuse everybody. And then where did this come from? Mm-hmm. Waking up for your life instead of to your life or waking up for your children instead of to your children. It came from, you know, if whether you have kids or not or whether you've seen movies on TV of mothers laying in bed and children kind of propelling themselves as small jets onto their bodies and saying, mom, Cheerio! Wait, that's it's time my, to get that's up. That's like life, right? right? <laughs> that you know, so that happened to me. That that did not. I don't know what it was, but it didn't set me off in this loving motherly mood to start my day. It would make me kind of pull the covers over my head, and I was grumpy. And uh, when my kids were small, I just remember really feeling like you were talking about earlier, just feeling like I'm messing this motherhood thing up. And so you know, I need to do something, something differently. And just really felt like as I was praying, I was like, God was like, just need to get up a little bit earlier. I'm like, I get up at old dark 30. I get up early enough. And, you know, felt like it was more like, you need to get up more intentionally and get up on purpose. And so I started just getting up lamely, like a few minutes before and like a few minutes before, you know, your kids would be up. Yeah. Just if you, you know, if they would normally would get up at six 30, then I get up at six 20 or just, you know, just Something, whatever. Or yeah. I'd, when my alarm would go off at six, then I'd sleep in until six 20, whatever yeah, it was. For sure. And just started with, okay, I'm just going to be intentional. Just like, you know, the Astros right now, uh, they're they're in in the World Series. We'll see what happens, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, You know, they don't just get to the park and run onto the field. They get to the park, they meet with their coach, they figure out the game plan, and then they go on the field. And as a mom, I don't want to be any less intentional. As a woman, I don't want to be less intentional with my family or with my friends or with my job or whatever I do. So, I, you know, I want to get up and spend a few minutes and be like, okay, God, you have a plan and a purpose for my life. So you have a plan and a purpose for this year, for this month. There are people maybe that you want me to encourage and speak into today. What, you know, I, I just want to be before you and, and hear what you have for them and, and how I can encourage people and, and what you want me to do today. And so just that intention um, changed the way I mothered and the way I walked through my day. And it had a huge impact on me. And so actually I started my blog uh, a long time ago and I thought, I'm, I'm not really much of a mom, mom. I hate craft stores. I don't really do, you know, fashion stuff. So what can I write about? I know I should like give something away when I start my blog. And I was like, well, I can do mornings. And so I wrote an ebook about waking up early. And, you know, I put it out there and I'm like, oh, this is going to be a hit. You know, who <laughs> wants to read about waking up early? Um, but then people did and they downloaded it. And I think it's a need that a lot of people have. How can I do this in a grace-filled way and not feel... Like it has to be this really hard striving thing. So that's how you started. started, And you know, as you're talking, both of you and I are both moms. And so we kind of tend to think that way, but it's, this is not a motherhood thing. Mm -mm, No, this is a life thing. And although I know there are men listeners to the show, it's mostly women. So we'll speak to women here, but it's a life thing. You know, it's not even just now we may talk about as we need to get before our kids. Right. And, you know, if you're single or you're married and you don't have kids yet, or you're an empty nester, it's, you're not probably getting up before anything, but you right. can still be intentional about your day as well. Exactly. Kat, I'll tell you full confession here. This is not my strong suit. Mm-hmm. I have told you that before. Mm-hmm. This is a struggle of mine. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, my kids, when they came home from Haiti, I, I guess their bodies were ready because when the sun was up at like five o'clock, <laughs> they were ready. And so they brought that into our family mm-hmm. as well. They're early risers. Um, and my kids are older now. And so it looks different. And Aaron and I do get to sleep in on the weekends because they're self-sustained. They're like sustainable. Right. They can, right. They can manage the house without us. Um, but this is so hard for women with young kids. Let's talk about that for a second. Okay. These little kids. Let's take our years back, but you and I both have older kids. And if you're listening and you don't have kids yet, just we're going to prepare you. And if your kids are gone... Uh, you know, they're older, you can reminisce with us. That's hard. It is hard. And so here's the thing. Life happens in different seasons. 
things always change. The way that you spent time with Jesus when you were in high school or college isn't going to be the way that you do it when you have little kids. And there's so much grace for that. So That's a shock to new mamas. Yes. Yeah. Yes. They think, oh, it needs to be an hour. It's not a quiet time until I have an hour. But you know, when I left the house this morning um, and and my husband was like, all right, well, I'll see you later. I I didn't like stonewall him and be like, you know what? I can't really go on a date with you at this moment. So I'm not even going to look at you or talk to you because I can't, you know, spend quality time with you. So I'm just going to ignore you until I can just sit down and Until we have an hour. Until we have an hour. Nobody does Nobody does that. That would be terrible. But we do that with the Lord or with our fitness or with planning our day or with whatever it is that we feel maybe kind of guilty about. We feel like we need to do this big, long thing. And if we can't, then, you know, we don't do anything. When really, you know, with Hello Mornings, we just encourage people to do a three-minute morning. And everybody, no matter what season of life you, you're in, everybody has three, min- three minutes. And um, the, the three things are just pray Psalm 143.8. Let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love for I've put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go for to you, I entrust my life. And so just letting that be your kind of morning prayer. Okay, God, today's the day that you made for me. I want to follow you. And just kind of submitting your heart to him that day. And then the second minute is just looking at your calendar. What's happening today? The third minute is drinking a glass of water. I am just starting my day, making a choice to do something good for my body. So I have the energy to do whatever God's called me to. And so three minutes and you do those three simple things And what that does is it helps us identify ourselves as people who do those things. So instead of saying, well, I'm not really a morning person, if just doing those three minutes, you know, if you just got a little calendar and just did three minutes every morning, you can start with one minute, just pray Psalm 143, eight. If you just cross that off for a month, one minute every day, by the end of the month, you could be like, oh, wow, I am a person who starts every day with Jesus, or I am a person who makes healthy choice every single day or a person who is intentional every single day. And there's so much to first believing that we can do something before trying to tackle something even bigger. And I think there's so much value in that and just doing the little thing. And so if you're in that phase of little, little kids, just do the small thing. The small thing is awesome. The small thing can lead to bigger things. But if we try to do the big thing first, then we tend to just not do it or crash and burn. It's so true. Or we look around at people who have older kids and we're like, God, how does she do that? Right. And the way that we do it is my kids on the weekend sleep till 10 o'clock. Mm-hmm. You know, that's how I, that's how I do that. Get a walk with my husband in the morning on Saturday. Mm-hmm. And you're like, wow, I wish I could. Well, I didn't used to get to do that, you know? And so we're kind of looking around us thinking, oh, I wish I could get that instead of just being intentional. And I love how you talk about the small things because a lot of times as women, we're like either, if we can't do it all the way, we're not going to do it. Right. Right. Which, you know. It doesn't work. Rome was like built that. in a day, yeah. you know? I feel like a lot of times when we feel guilty about something, whether it's spending time with God or fitness or planning, we feel like there needs to be pain involved in order to make up for that guilt we feel. When in actuality, guilt is a good thing because it just triggers, hey, something's maybe something needs to be adjusted. But our response to guilt shouldn't be, it doesn't have to be pain. Our response to guilt needs to be grace in order to say, okay, I feel guilty. Something needs to be adjusted. Let me go this direction now. I don't need to, you know, necessarily make recompense for, you know, not working out for a hundred years by doing a million pushups today. I just need to say, okay, I feel guilty. I'm going to give myself grace to just make this small adjustment and then we can grow. And so I, I make this dorky mathematical equation of guilt plus grace equals growth. Because when we merge the two together, instead of trying to keep them separate, then that's kind of when I think we can really take those small steps so that we can grow. I love that. When you're talking about that, I'm thinking this is me to a T, what you described, because I'll be like, gosh, I haven't worked out in like three months. I'm really getting lazy. I can feel it in my body. I need to take care of myself. I'm like, I'm gonna go run five miles. Well, that's dumb. And then you're super sore the next day. Yeah. You pull or something. I die. Yeah, right. or I pull my back. And then, you know, I'm like, well, maybe I should start with a walk, you know, right. like walk around the neighborhood. So we do that so much. Um, you know, one thing I remember about you is that you used to put a lot of pictures up. And I don't know if this happens anymore in your world because your kids, how old is your youngest? He's 10. He's 10 now. Okay, so we're the same age. Uh, but when your kids were younger, I used to notice that you would put photos up of you in your office or your closet or wherever you are um, reading and planning. And you had a little spot prepared for your kids. Yeah. And I remember thinking what wisdom there is in that because life throws you curveballs. Kids wake up, you know, Mm -hmm. or someone's sick or something. And you welcome them into that instead of saying, get away, mom needs her time. Did you, was that, obviously it probably was intentional or did it come from just, there's a need, my kids are waking up. So I need to provide something for them. 
I mean, I have a very strong soft spot for cute little children in the morning who want to hug me. So, you know, but you know, there were times when I was like, you know, you're interrupting my time. I had a plan here. Yeah. Um, but no, even to this day, I have little chairs in my, I have, my office is in my closet and I, I bought these little floor chairs and my very tall 13 year old, my tall 15 year old will wrap themselves up in that little chair and in the blankets and they'll sit in there with me. Um, they don't get up early anymore, but when they come in there, they just sit in there and it's just so sweet. You know, my son will love to come in and he loves to use the, um, the version kids Bible app. I don't remember the name of it at the moment, but I'd be doing my cry time and he would doing, be doing his and the little version app. And um, it just, you know, allowed me to continue to have my time. And it was, a, it's a sweet, fun memory, I think for all of them. Like we often joke when they're all, cr- sometimes they all cram themselves into my office. It's literally <laughs> five feet by five feet. Yeah, and they all closet. cram themselves in there. And I'll be like 2,600 square feet. <laughs> We have 2,600 square feet. <laughs> and you want to be house, right here. And you want to be in five. <laughs> yes, yes. It's great, though. It really is. Okay, so I also need everyone to know that if you want an office, you can make an office because yours is in your closet with your clothes. Am I right? Right. There are some clothes in there. I, I do steal my husband's closet for some of my clothes, but yes. Yes. There are clothes in there. But I have also have a full desk, I have a full bookshelf. Um, and then there's a bunch of cubbies that I keep clothes in. So they're hidden. So I can actually still film videos in there it's and you so don't crazy. see my, yeah. you know, sweatshirt. Before this space that I have now, I was in a closet as well. It's it like, actually it was a big a cedar closet studio. It does this. We still have some work to do in here. So if it sounds different today, it's because we haven't done the work yet, but it does make, it made great audio, great audio. And here's the other thing. My closet is in my bathroom. So nobody knows what I'm doing. So I feel like it, it's like this extra level of Fort Knox privacy because they're not necessarily going to knock because mama could be, could in, the be in the bathroom. <laughs> Who knows what she's doing? Yeah, that's the best. Um, I, I'm, thanks for talking about that because I know that some mamas are going to be like, my kids are just with me. And what a great joy to, to see, to let your kids see you in the word, planning, you know, doing all kinds of things things like that. It's really, it's a great teaching and learning thing for your mm-hmm. kids. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So we talked about the mornings and you wrote a book about this. Yes. It's called Hello Mornings. Isn't it ironic? Isn't it ironic? Yeah. Um, is your book, what, is it like, who, who's going to read this? Is it me who's thinking, I want my mornings to be better. I want to wake up for my, my people, life, for my your life, life for my your people, people, not for... to them. Right. I'm right. going to get it straight eventually. I'm going to wake up for my people, not to them, for my life, not to my life. Um, we talked about meeting a need, you know, marketing. Mm-hmm. Did you just keep feeling you've been running this community for seven years? Was it just like the need is grand and people want this? And is that what led you to put it in a book form? Well, I think there's just so much that I could share about it. And I just wanted it all in one place because a big part of the book is me sharing my story. I'll super condense it right here, but Um, so I never knew my mom. She died when I was a baby and, uh, she was from the Philippines and I grew up with my all American dad and his family and, you know, just really struggled with the whole mother thing growing up. And so then when I had kids and I started the mother blog, I was like, well, that's ironic. The motherless mom blogger, that doesn't make any sense. And so, you know, as I started writing that morning ebook, um, you know, just following God day by day by day, eventually led me to, um, have Compassion International, uh, invite me to go on one of their blogger trips. And it ended up out of all the places they could have gone to the Philippines. And just a few months before that trip, I got a Facebook message um, from someone who said, Hey, my name's Esther Sandy. I'm your cousin in the Philippines. And so, um, had I you said, been trying? No, random, random connection. Uh, I, I remembered from like childhood, maybe writing some airmail letters, but that was it. And so I replied, I was like, wow, well, actually I'm going to be in Manila in a few months. She's like, great, we'll meet you. So the day that I met my Compassion sponsor child, we got back to the hotel and we drove up in front of it and there was like floor to ceiling windows. And there were just all these people there. And 18 members of my family had traveled over 24 hours uh, just to meet me. And it was like the first time in my life that I was surrounded by people that looked just like me, that I finally knew how many brothers and sisters my mom had. And it was just you know, you can only imagine. It was just a really, really special moment for me. And and it was really just all from, okay, God, this doesn't make any sense, but I'm going to start this mom blog. This doesn't make any sense, but I'm going to write this ebook. This doesn't make any sense, but I'm just going to keep following you day by day. And I just feel like he has an extraordinary story for all of us. I don't know what that story might be, but there's something fantastic for every single one of us that may not look fantastic to the rest of the world, but this beautiful redemption of our story, whatever it is, and there's so 
it, it's all about the small things, just waking up, be like, Jesus, what do you want me to do today? I just want to follow you today. And just doing that day by day has been so impactful in my life. And I, I just, and I have so much hope for other people and I, I want them to step into that. And I can't do anything on my own to help other people. But if I can just get people to meet with Jesus every day, I feel like they're going to walk into that amazing story of their yeah. own. So, yeah. so that's a big part of the book. But then I'm also pretty nerdy and I like um, like scientific studies and facts. So I write about the different elements of waking up early. Like how do we get more sleep? What are practicals on on how to sleep work and and how can we maximize our sleep? Or I talk about fitness and uh, how really how kind of spending time with Jesus and planning a fitness all work together. They're not really separate things. God calls us to things in life. And so we want to organize our life according to what he's called us to. And we all want to have the energy to do what he's called us to. And so um, it kind of explains that a little bit so that there's more vision, I think, for people with their fitness instead of just trying to fit into a certain gene size or whatever. Which is usually why we Which want to do fitness. Which is usually why we want to do it. But instead, like my heart is that, you know, I, I want to be fit to do whatever God has called me to do with excellence and joy. And so that's going to look different for different people. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, it, it's just so much information that I, I wanted it to all be in one place so people could get the whole grasp of what it is. It's not just about waking up early. It's about stepping into this great purpose that God has for you. It's not about planning and being organized. It's about just ordering your day to follow whatever he's called you to. It's not just about being fit. It's about having the energy to do the things that he's called you to. And um, so so, taking these big grand things that seem kind of out of touch and it's like really hard and then Mm -hmm. bringing them down to like thinking a lot of people, you can do these small steps Mm -hmm. at a time Mm -hmm. and make a difference. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I love the, all that you're doing with Hello Mornings. And I was in one of the, what do you, what do you guys do online? What do you call we them? Have, we have groups and then we have like a challenge that's kind of like a big Facebook group. So what, so, what did I do? I don't know. Did you do the 30 day Maybe. challenge? Like Maybe. I had a leader and I was in a Facebook group. Oh, you group. were in a Facebook group. Yeah, that was a session. And we usually do those with like a Bible study and stuff. So I think it was a challenge then. It was a cha- okay, maybe it was a challenge. I failed. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, see, here's the thing. We don't fail until we die. Once we're dead, then maybe we failed. But until then, we're just learning. See, this is why you, this is why you need cat in your life, guys, right here. <laughs> I, I saw one quote that says something like, um, the only difference between a beginner and a master is that the master has failed more times than the beginner has even tried. So you didn't fail, you just took another step. Totally true. Towards it. Yeah. And in the school year, I do have to get up before my kids because somebody has to wake them up, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Although my kids are old enough, they need to start waking themselves up. But that's Mm -hmm. another podcast. Okay, guys, I know you're loving this show with Kat. But first, I want to thank our sponsors who make this show possible. Let me give you a task, all right? Pick out a wine that you're going to love. But there's a catch. It has to be one that you haven't had before. First of all, this is one of my favorite tasks to take on in the grocery store or anywhere I buy my wine. So where would you start if this was the task I gave you? Okay, guys, I want to tell you about Wink. It's W-I-N-C, Wink. Wink makes it easy to discover great wines because Wink's wine experts select wines matched to your taste, personalized for you, shipped right to your door and starting at just $13 a bottle. My friends, that is a price point that you can love. There's nothing like coming home to a box of delicious Wink wine selected just for you. It's basically the best day of your month. All you need to do is just fill out Wink's palette profile quiz and answer simple questions that your average store clerk wouldn't ask or translate into recommendations. So let me give you an example. Here's some questions they're going to ask you because I took this and they sent me wine and it was wonderful. Questions like, how do you take your coffee? How would you feel about blueberries? Then Wink sends wines curated to your taste. The more wines you rate, the more personalized your monthly selections. Each month, there are new delicious wines like the insanely popular Summer Water Rosé. No membership fees. You can skip any month and cancel any time. Shipping is complimentary, and if you don't like a bottle they send you, they're going to replace it with a bottle that you'll love. No questions asked. Wink also makes great gifts this holiday season. You can send a personalized gift card and let your recipient choose their wine from Wink's great selection. There's a gift for that person you don't know what to get, guys. You don't have to guess what they like. Wink is going to figure it out. Discover great wine today. Go to trywink.com slash happy, and you're going to get $20 off your first shipment. And friends, you don't have to tell anybody if that's a shipment to you or to your in-law's house, okay? That's trywink, and wink is W-I-N-C dot com slash happy for $20 off. Trywink.com slash happy. And if you can't remember that, always remember that it's over at my webpage, jamieivy.com. And I'm going to go now select my new wines for December. 
Guys, I also want to thank Texture. Okay, have you ever walked by a newsstand and seen a stunning magazine cover that makes you want to stop and peek inside? Um, I'm raising my hand because that's me every time I'm in the store. Or read a cover headline that makes you need to know more? Next time you do, remember Texture, okay? With the Texture app, not only do you get a peek, you get the whole magazine plus unlimited access to over 200 additional premium titles like Time, The Atlantic, The New Yorker, and Wired, and Bon Appetit, and Real Simple. And right now, you can try Texture for free. Okay, so just imagine you're having your favorite magazine and you can get their back issues anytime, anywhere. Guys, this is perfect for the month of December. To start your Texture free trial, go to texture.com slash Jamie. And if you choose to continue, podcast listeners of this show are going to get Texture for just $9.99 a month. That's over 30% off their listed price. There are also great gift options available for the holiday season. So go to texture.com slash Jamie to start your free trial today. That's texture.com slash Jamie to start your free trial today. Okay, thank you to those people who make happy hour happen. And now, you guys, Kat is gonna talk to us about something that she does with her kids during their eighth grade year. I'm so intrigued by this, and you're gonna love what she does. It is so intentional with her kids. Here she is. <laughs> um, okay, speaking of kids, you do something that I've always thought was really amazing and great. It's not work well for our family, but everybody family has their own things. Every time, well, this is your second time to do it. Right, so yeah, every, every time. This is your second time to do it, but you'll do it one more time with your yeah. son. You take your kids out for eighth grade mm -hmm. and you homeschool them mm -hmm. for one year. For one year. Now, this seems like kind of a nightmare for me. It depends on your definition of homeschool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you have, you're very purposeful with this and I love it so much. You, you bring them out for a purpose. You're not just like, I'm going to bring you out of the world and all the things. You have a purpose and a plan for this, which you do with your whole life, which I love. You're very purposeful. Why do you bring them out for their eighth grade year? Well, you know, I mean, everybody remembers middle school. It's not the most awesome It's the worst year of my life. Yes. You know, in the world. But so it's a great time to kind of pull them out of the crazy. But I also feel like it's a great time. They're not so ingrained into their group of friends yet, or at least mine haven't been. Um, that it feels weird to pull them out. They still kind of think you're cool sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. Um, and then it's also a year, at least for, I found for my kids, when they really find kind of their passion. So for me, that's been kind of the great thing. I've wanted to do two things when we pull them out. One, to really get to know them one-on-one -on -one without their siblings around, with other, uh, other people around, and just kind of get them. And then two, to help them figure out what they're really passionate about and, and what they love to do. And so that worked great with my oldest daughter when we did that. She had come from a small private school where she could do everything and be in everything. And then she went to the big middle school for seventh grade. And, you know, people have been doing everything that they did since birth. Or yeah, whatnot. seems like it. Yeah. Uh, and so it was hard for her to find her spot. And then when we pulled her out to homeschool, she realized that she'd done orchestra, but she realized that viola was her passion and she's amazing at it now. And um, it was just really fun to watch her figure that out. And then this daughter, my 13 year old, uh, tennis has been her thing. And so that's been really neat to encourage and, and walk with her through it. So the school part. Yeah. What does that school. look like? You know, um, so <laughs> <laughs> with my 15 year old, it went one way. We did um, my father's world curriculum, uh -huh. which was great. And we followed their plan and everything. And she enjoyed the structure and she followed the structure. This daughter isn't, she is super responsible. She's like 13 going on 40. Uh -huh. So but she doesn't like the structure as much. So she's sort of doing her own structure. We tell her what she needs to do and what she needs to learn, but she's kind of, I think, enjoying the freedom of doing her own structure. I think, I wonder if, I'm psychoanalyzing my, my child. I wonder if being a middle child, she's used to kind of doing what the oldest needs, doing what the youngest needs. And I think she's enjoying this year, just kind of her own thing, her own thing and setting her own schedule and, we're making sure that she's getting done everything she needs to get done, but she's kind of organizing yeah. how it works. So yeah. that's been kind of interesting to watch and fun to watch. Well, I, I mean, I love it. I, I think it's just amazing because I have an eighth grade boy right now. And obviously we don't have favorite kids. I mean, most days. Right. Uh, you can like a kid better one day than you like the others. I mean, I'm down with that. Um, but my eighth grade boy, I'm telling you, this is, this is my favorite stage. And he's our oldest. So it's the first time we've had an eighth grader. And granted, I cannot imagine my daughter in eighth grade. I, every kid's different <laughs> is what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm loving Caden in eighth grade. I mean, loving. And so when you're talking about this, I could spend every day with him. Mm -hmm. He makes me laugh. He's funny. Um, 
we, we get along, you know? And so I see the value in what you're doing. And I really love it that you are doing that. Your, your girls are going to remember that and your son too, he's just not in it yet, but they're going to remember that year. Mm-hmm. And although I'm sure it's been hard, it's going to be really, really special. Yeah. I mean, I'll definitely say there are challenges to it, of course, uh, but I will, having done it once, I find it was so bad. It was invaluable, honestly, as a parent to so get my 15 year old now that there's, you know, all the high school drama, high school stress and everything. I know how to help her. I know what You've works like and what foundation. doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, that was priceless. I think for us. I can't wait to hear the difference between doing it with two girls and doing it with a son. Well, it's already been super different just doing it with the two girls. Cause they're, Cause so, they're different. so different. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I can imagine. I love Caden so much in eighth grade. I'm sure that there'll be other grades that I love other kids mm-hmm. more. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. they'll just, their personalities mature and develop at different times. Yeah. And yeah, it's great. Uh, you guys also, and I know that we talked about this when I had you on the first time, cause y'all were doing it then. Y'all do major family road trips we in the do. summer. We I'm do. talking like major as in, are you gone for like two weeks? Yeah. yeah some two, two and a half, sometimes three. It depends. It's a long time. Yeah. It's, it's fun. We, we, Your husband works from remotely or does he get that much vacation? He That's works kind of from a personal home. question. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he, he works from home, um, and, but he usually just takes it off. And, and so, which is actually hard for him to do because he's progressively moved up at his job. Uh-huh. But pretty much it is his favorite thing. So he plans our trips. He organizes from the begin from the end of the last trip until the next trip. He is planning for it, like getting point hotel points, uh-huh. yeah. you know, that sort of thing and scheduling his off time and all that. So, you know, yeah, but it's, it's intense. We hit, I think our 42nd state this summer. So we have, you, do you have like a goal to get them all before your yeah, oldest before my oldest goes to college? So, um, we have six left cause we're only doing the lower 48. We, we tell them that I was going to say, yeah. where, where are you going to do Hawaii and Alaska? That's like, <laughs> you know, we're, we're like, you know, when you guys get older, you can gift us uh, yes. with trips to Hawaii and Alaska. But right now when we you fly, have your own airline points, right. yeah. If we fly anywhere, we are going to go to Europe or yeah. something. Yeah. Um, so yeah, six left to go and they're all in the kind of the Northwest. Okay. So are you so, going that way this summer? Yeah. We're, I think we're going to Yosemite. I actually don't know very much. I've been to Yosemite. Have you? Yeah. It like, when you talk about your family road trips, my family didn't do like crazy long trips like yours mm-hmm. did. And we didn't do a ton of them, but usually it was with my grandparents mm-hmm. and they would kind of, I'm assuming they paid for it. Like, isn't that awesome? That's I hope to do that one day. To do I know. Road trip. Um, but they would bring, you know, all, any grandkids that could come. And usually my mom, my dad stayed home and work, but some of my favorite memories are the trips. And we did a Yosemite trip with my grandparents and my whole extended family. I'm looking forward to it. We, we like nature a lot. We did New England this summer, which we loved, but I don't think any of us prefer big cities. We, you know, so we did Boston, Philadelphia, New York City and everything this summer, which were great, great experiences. I think we all thrive a little bit more either at historical locations or in national parks. So I'm excited for this this round of the trip. I told Aaron, I want to take our kids to Yosemite. Mm-hmm. I just have, you know, when you have a great memory yes. of someplace, uh-huh. you, you want to pass it on to your kids. And I have don't, haven't been to a lot of places, but Yosemite, I have really fond memories of. It's funny what you remember when you're a kid, right? It'll be interesting to hear what your kids remember <laughs> from all these trips. Do y'all drive? We do. We do. We get, And actually, this is an interesting fact. I have not driven a single half foot of our trips. Jimmy drives the whole thing. He drives the whole thing. I and think I likes moved to? a car in a parking lot once. Uh, yes, he yeah. prefers to, and I prefer not to. I, it works that well. It totally bores me to drive. Is yeah. that weird? Uh-uh. Uh, it's like the little white dash yeah. just puts me to sleep. <laughs> I don't know. And that's not good. So I would rather sit and read, and he prefers to drive. So yeah. it works out very well. Aaron drives most of our trips too. Uh, okay, Kat, what are you loving these days? I honestly, I am loving playing tennis with my 13-year-old. I grew up playing tennis, and nobody in my family played sports. So I would literally just go out to the court and hit the ball all by myself without even a backboard. Over and over. It's so pathetic now that I think about it. And so I have an awesome tennis partner and I have to play with her every day. It's sort of my job. So because it's her like thing. It's her big thing. So I am absolutely, absolutely loving that. You know, I've never played tennis. Have you never played I've tennis? Never played tennis. You know what? There are a few things that are so stressful leaving. Like once you get the hang of it, mm. you can just wail on the ball and it is I can see, even if you're drawing rewarding. a backboard, that constant boom, boom. Yeah. I can see how that would be. I am not good with like hand, eye, like mm. softball, tennis. Like I don't, I don't thrive there, mm-hmm. but no, I'm not too old to pick it up. Right. No. Yeah. And you know, people play tennis. I've been completely demolished by innocent looking 80 year old women who know, just know exactly where to be and exactly where to hit right the ball. time. Tennis is a sport though, to encourage your kids in, cause it's like a lifelong sport. Yes. Yeah. And you don't need, you don't need your school to be able to do it. Like she's homeschooling right now, but there's tons of different 
things she can participate in and tournaments that she can play in. So she's not missing out at all right. by not playing yeah. at school. So that's awesome. Uh, I am also loving sugar snap peas. Is that random? No, it's not random. They're okay. kind of- uh, A little fat. Yes. Yes. I I want to snack on things a lot. I know. And they're fun to snack on because you can like bite them in half and then eat out all the little peas. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know. Why. Yeah. For some reason, I love these. And so they keep me from eating all kinds of other things and I really enjoy them. And so I need a, I need a snap pea budget because they cost like $3 a bag. Do you dip them in anything? No. Okay. I just eat them in the car pickup love line. It. Love, love it. Love them. And I'm actually currently loving Little Men. It's like a, a like based on the Louisa May Alcott book. It's a TV show. I mean, there's obviously the book, yeah. but it's a TV show. It's on like Amazon Prime, and I just sort of binge watched it. I don't watch much TV, hardly at all. But it was just a sweet little show. Little Men, and I could watch with my kids. Little Men. Mm-hmm. It's about Joe, and she starts the school and their exploits there. We always need shows we can watch with our kids. Yeah, that's why I love it. That's the big thing, like of trying to find those things out. Because like you, I have a t- almost, I have a 10 year old mm-hmm. and then I have an almost 14 year old. Mm-hmm. And that gap is, it gets wider and wider. Mm-hmm. Like the older the 14 year old gets. Um, and we're always looking for family shows. Yeah. So th- it's a good show, you know, little cheesy on occasion or whatever, but that, and there's a show called Heartland. It's a Canadian horse it. show. It's, okay, yeah. And basically driving down here, we'd pass all these horse place, horse places. And I was like, Allie, I wonder if they need my help. Cause I'm, I've watched six seasons of Heartland. So I'm kind of like a horse expert. Oh, of course you are. I wonder yeah. if they could use my help. Uh huh. I used to tell my friends I could deliver their babies. Cause I used to watch on TLC, <laughs> like all the hospital shows. I'm like, I totally got this. <laughs> I'm, I'm your girl if you need me. Um, okay. What are you reading? I, well, I just read this awesome book called, if you only knew ah. it was, it was so seriously, if this is another podcast and I was talking to a different host, y'all, this is an awesome book. Seriously, so good. E- super easy to read, really meaningful. And I don't know, it just made me think. It made me change some of what I thought about myself or the Lord. It, really good. Um, oh, I, you've I, got me like all blushing no, over I here. Honestly, I actually was at a book club where some people were reading my book and it was totally awkward to hear yes. them say what they thought about my book. And so you're probably feeling the same way, but I honestly, I really really loved it. And not even because I know you and because you're my friend, I'm going to just tell everybody Thank that they you. need to read it because I think it's a book that everybody needs to read. Thank you so much. Um, and then I also read a book recently called Unoffendable by Brant Hansen. He's a, I think he's, or actually, I don't know where he's a DJ, but I used to work with him at KSBJ radio in Houston. And he's like one of the funniest people I know, but he wrote this book called Unoffendable. And it's just about how we as believers should, that sounds like a a very, it makes it sound like a legalistic book, but can be unoffendable, like not offended if somebody with completely different viewpoints walks into our church or not offended if someone treats us poorly because our security is in the Lord. And I don't know that I can communicate the heart of the book as well as I would like to. It was really good on so many levels. He's super funny, but it was also very, very profound. Okay. Um, so unoffendable. Unoffendable. And I highly recommend getting the Audible book because he is- oh, Does he read it and it's funny? He reads it and he, like, I never missed staff meeting because our sta- our the staff was so funny. Like I went to staff meetings like it was a comedy That's club. That's hilarious. Um, so yeah, really, really good book that I think I'm going to need to listen to several times because I finished reading it. And then later on, I was totally offended by something. Somebody in my family <laughs> You're like, did. I need a retake. <laughs> I'm not getting the point of this book yet. It seems like a very timely book as well it, with culture yes. and stuff. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I thought about making my daughter listen to it as we drove, but you know, maybe yeah. another time. Is it appropriate for like teenagers and stuff? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's good and to it, know as well. And again, I listened to the audiobook. I don't know if his humor translates as well in written word because it's a very dry humor. <laughs> Yeah. But it is if you listen to the audiobook, I think it I think a kid could really enjoy okay. it. And it's a really excellent book. Is your book an audiobook? It will be. I just recorded it. It was so fun. Like the place that I recorded it at, this guy, so he toured with Keith Green back in the day. He had a song on the Billboard charts. He was like a SWAT team trainer. He makes his own bullets. He travels down the Amazon building recording studios for Wycliffe translators. I mean, I feel what like- What can he not do? Exactly. I felt like every time he'd tell me something, and he didn't say it in a bragging way. He's yeah. an older, you know, older than me. 
And so he's just lived life fully. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I feel like if there's ever some sort of catastrophic event, I'm just bringing my family <laughs> here. here. Yeah. Yeah. That's so hilarious. It was super fun to record there. I enjoyed it. So how long did it take you to record it? Two days. How many hours each day? Maybe six. Okay. And we took some breaks and it was, it was a very fun experience because I'm used to podcasting and then doing my own editing with stuff. And so it was fun. I just sat there and drank tea and talked when he told me to talk and stopped when he told me to stop. And he had this great place on the Brazos River. It was, it you was loved magical. It. Mm-hmm. The life it. of a writer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, two seconds of. Yeah, yeah. The life of that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on the Happy Hour. Oh, it's been so much fun. Um, so everybody... Cat's book comes out uh, next week on December 5th. And so you can get it for yourself. You can pre-order it today if you want it. Uh, Get it for a Christmas gift. Get it for a group of friends. A group of friends. A book club. It would be awesome for a book club. Yeah. So there's all those things. And so go check that out. I'll put all the links up to everything we talked about in the show notes like usual. Thanks, Kat. Thanks, Jamie. All right, guys, wasn't that a fun chat with Kat? She is such an encourager and she is a downright great mama too. If you're still looking for gifts, check out her book that comes out next week, Hello Mornings. It'll be on my webpage, a link to get it, plus anything else we talked about in the show notes today. Hey guys, we love having great advertisers that support our show, and it's how the show happens. And so, but in order to continue doing that, we need your help. So will you do us a favor? We go to podcastlistener.com slash Jamie, podcastlistener.com slash Jamie to answer a few short questions. It's going to be really helpful to us. Again, that's podcastlistener.com slash Jamie. I got an email from someone this week that said she loves the show so much and she even loves all the advertisers. And so what you don't know maybe is that they help this show happen and I get to pick out who do I want to have on the show. And so it's important to me. So I value your input a lot. All right, friends, next week on the show is Trisha Goyer, where we talk about adoption and marriage and some things that really were kind of where she was saying, hey, if you only knew about this, what would people think about me? It's a really good one. And if you missed last week with Abby Campman, I really encourage you to go back and listen to it. You may not know who Abby is, but her story is unbelievable. She sent me an email earlier in the year, just kind of laying her story out there, and I could not get it out of my head. I literally thought about it all the time. And finally, we contacted her and said, you've got to come share your story. You're going to love her story because God is so evident in bringing just like good stuff from really messy stuff. And that's what he does. And so go check out Abby Campman. And then the week before that was our Christmas holiday gift guide. Don't forget to check that out. And then the month of December is going to be really fun. We've got Trisha, we've got Jenna, we've got Polly and Rebecca. And we're going to do something very fun for the end of the year. You're going to love it. All right, friends, I will see you next week. Today's show was edited by Chris with Podshaper and the music is from Jason Poe. Enjoy your last few days of November. Get ready for December. Share the show with a girlfriend and have a happy hour with a friend. I will see you next week, my friends. 